Hello and welcome to Castle's Corner. I'm Coach Castle, and I'm here to educate you in the latest science regarding biomechanics, biochemistry, respiratory health, nutrition, and much more. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and like these videos if you find this content helpful. But now, let's go ahead and get into the video. In this video, I'll be going over the biomechanical differences between the hammer bicep curl, the neutral grip bicep curl, as well as a pretty amazing way to combine the two of these into a new movement, provided you're doing it correctly, which will actually train all of your bicep in its full entirety, allowing for full muscle contraction. But as always, let's get into the science first and the demonstration second. And this is because, as you all know, I prioritize your education above the simple monkey see and monkey do that so many of the other YouTubers employ, asking that you simply trust them based on the fact that they have good physiques. I simply don't ask you to trust me because I have a good physique. I ask you to trust me because I'm good with physics and science, to look at the evidence which I demonstrate, and to then come to your own logical conclusions. Now the difference between the two different variations is pretty simple to explain. Basically, when you're performing the hammer grip, you're using your forearm to a small extent, as well as your bicep meaning the brachialis muscle inside of your forearm, as well as your actual bicep muscles. This is essentially limiting the total amount of stress being able to be placed upon the bicep. Now, in the other variation, uh, with your hand in the neutral grip position, you are loading the bicep directly, achieving 100% of the loading directly onto the biceps. However, this is lacking a full contraction of one of the bicep heads. So, this is the short and simple summary of it, but it's important to understand that this is not entirely accurate, and in order to understand fully, I'm going to have to get into the nuances, the actual science, and break down what the muscles are actually doing, so you can comprehend what is occurring, as well as how to combine the two movements ideally during your workouts to develop a completed biceps as efficiently as possible. So now let's go ahead and get into the muscle groups involved in these three similar exercise movement patterns for the bicep. To begin with, the brachialis muscle crosses at only one articulation, the elbow. It is said to be a monarticular muscle. It is simple action of mobilizing this joint, and it flexes only at the forearm. When the hand is pronated, the distal tendon of the bicep's brachii muscle is partially wrapped around the radius. That's the second bone here. Now, the biceps brachii muscle crosses over at more than one articulation. It goes over that of the elbow as well as the shoulder, uh, meaning it is a polyarticular muscle. That is, it can mobilize more than one joint and its action is more complex. So, the biceps brachii can bend the elbow, raise the elbow, bring the arm to the thorax, and place the forearm into supination, or underhand grip. When the biceps brachii contracts, the force placed upon its distal tendon causes the radius to pivot on its axis, bringing the hand into supination. To minimize effort when performing an action, the muscle will first always recruit the fibers in the most direct path, or the most linear path, located deep in the muscle. And it is a common belief that the greater the force, the deeper part of the muscle that is worked. But, the more the intensity or effort increases, the more superficial muscles will be recruited to perform the movement. Now, now, furthermore, the deep and linear muscles are generally slower to contract, but more resistant to repetitive movements than the lateral, more curved, and longer muscles. Both the short and long head are involved in the supination or turning of the forearm upwards. And in addition, they are responsible for flexion of the elbow and consequently the arm. Now, the biceps are not the primary supinators of the arm, as you will no doubt know already, the long lateral head of the biceps is far larger and the most well known for the action in the biceps curl as it produces the most force. This is the one that you're using when you're doing the neutral or supinated grip bicep curl. Now outside of its greater force generation, it has no further function. The brachialis has a more synergistic action, and that is the supination of the arm and forearm. The long head is its helper and primary mover but it is not responsible for the supination of the forearm. That is the smaller short head's job. It assists in the front deltoid when it comes to raising the forearm upwards, as well as towards the body and the stabilization of the shoulder joint. Now as a simple demonstration, you can perform this for yourself. Curl your forearms towards your shoulders, 
while simultaneously rotating your palms outward. Think bodybuilder posing on stage. You don't have to grab weights for this, just perform the action with clenched fists. Now, you can see your biceps quite literally contract quite a bit more, causing a larger peak. And the reason for this is you're achieving a full contraction in both heads of your bicep, basically making it peak greater. Now note, again, this is also the best way to be posing, as it highlights the peak of your bicep, provided you're doing a front double bicep or something like that. Now, you will quite frequently hear mention of specifically training the peak of your bicep. Well, this is not actually accurate, as muscles have an all-or-nothing contraction principle, it is possible to get additional muscle contraction by rotating your palms outward, as just demonstrated, and towards the conclusion of the bicep curl. Now, naturally, this is only possible with dumbbells or some other form of unilateral instrument, and in some cases, some other instruments can be better. So, if you'd like to target the muscle efficiently doing this rotating movement, Every little bit counts, don't forget, get your finger exercise in and help me out at the same time. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. There is a specific way to hold the dumbbell, or in some cases, other instrument, such as Thor's hammer, which I'm demonstrating here. Now, I've only ever seen other channels use the silliest possible ways when demonstrating Thor's hammer. It is not made to hit things or anything else that they seem to think it is. Uh, in the demonstration provided here, you're using it efficiently, and you're maximally using it basically to your advantage for developing peak bicep development. And I have other videos where I demonstrate how to properly and intelligently use this device as the lever it's intended to be. However, a regular dumbbell will do, or a basic short-handed sledgehammer as well. Essentially, what you're doing is using a loading principle by adding some additional inches to the dumbbell on one particular side. You're adding the additional load on the pinky side, starting facing downwards, but as you move throughout the range of movement, it actually crosses through the correct resistance curve uh, throughout the inward rotation, adding to the full contraction of the short head of the biceps. And again, it will be within the appropriate resistance curve, achieving maximum benefit. Now this is a training tip which is not often discussed or covered in detail, and this is the actual explanation for it. Note that the additional benefit performing this action is very minimal due to the all or nothing contraction principle. However, all percentages do always add up, and it should be performed very slowly and with extremely deliberate control throughout the range of motion. This is to prevent the use of centrifugal force or momentum, which could actually tweak your wrist, and really it will take away from the benefit of the exercise itself. Now, of course, when performing any bicep curl, you're going to want to keep your upper arm fixed in place throughout the movement. Don't allow your shoulder to jerk forward or your elbow to leave its position. And you should never go to complete musculature failure. Rather, stop with one or two reps and reserves. Now, I hope this helps everyone, and have a great day. And as always, please just make sure to leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, as it does help this channel grow. You won't see me stop, no, you won't see me quit, I'm gonna make it to the top.